What's going on guys? You're in with Hardy Tech. Welcome to more grinding for my Leaf Green Egg Lock run. We have about two hours of grinding. Um, I decided to get everybody up to level 35. I figured that'd be a good place to stop. Nice, even, balanced, probably underleveled. I'm gonna die. I'm okay with that. And I took on the trainers between Fuchsia and Vermilion because it's like literally nothing but birds. And that was a good place to train Aerodactyl and th that water thing. So... Yeah, anyways, on with the stories. So before we get to the subscriber stories, I'm going to be telling one of mine. I think this is kind of a good format for this. A personal story, then some subscriber stories, so it's kind of balanced, I suppose. And I'm going to be telling the story of how I met Rust Butt the Deer. Also known as Rusty, my friend, she, yeah, that one that draws things. Was in a video earlier in the Leaf Green series. It's been in my vlogs on Team Caterpie. How did I meet this wonderfully gay deer? Well, that's what I'm going to be telling you guys. So... Last year, at uh, our high school graduation, we were both homeschooled uh, for different reasons. I was homeschooled because, well, uh, you guys heard the story of how I got expelled. And once I started homeschool, it was like, oh my god, why would I ever get up at 7 in the morning when I could sleep until midnight or 12 noon, whatever that other 12 o'clock hour is. So that's why I was homeschooled. And I don't know if she wants me telling people why she was homeschooled. She didn't get in trouble or anything. She was, like, she was just homeschooled. We'll just go with that. And basically, so all the homeschooled kids had their own little like graduation. There was like 60 of us and they just kind of threw us in this room beforehand. And I didn't know anybody at, that went to this homeschooling school thing. So I just kind of walked in there. I found an empty table. I sat down and I started staring at all the posters on the wall because that's what cool kids do. They, they read school posters. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this short little badass girl walks over to the table that I'm at and says, it was pretty loud where I am. I think that's what she said. It was something about where she was. It was loud and she wanted quiet. So she sat down. And in my mind, when she said that, that made me think, okay, she obviously wants quiet, so she doesn't want to talk. And it never actually occurred to me until about a month ago that if she didn't want to talk, if she wanted just complete silence, the entire table was empty. She probably wouldn't have sat next to me. So... I didn't really think about that one. Either way, so in my mind, I'm like absolutely terrified because this girl I've never met before wearing these odd sunglasses decides to sit down next to me of all people, absolutely terrifying me because I am not exactly a social butterfly. I like to keep to myself and not talk and play Pokemon, obviously. So having some random stranger come down next to me and like kind of force you into social interaction, not really my cup of tea. But... I was, like, this whole time I'm trying to debate, do I say something, do I not? Do I say something, do I not? Because, although I've improved a bit, back then my self-confidence was kind of in a way of, like, I'm not, like, worthy of talking to people, I guess. Like, if I talk to a person, more specifically, like, a girl, that they'll actually, like, get mad at me for thinking that I have the right to talk to them, because I'm not good enough to talk to them. Which, for the record, is, you should never think that. That's a horrible way to think. Trust me, I lived through it. And so I've always stopped myself from talking to them out of fear that they would get mad at the fact that I tried talking to them. So I think eventually she just kind of got bored of waiting for me to finally man up and say something. So she started conversation and she ended up asking, so do you play video games? And yeah, that's how it started. And then I, I was extremely nervous talking to her and I think I ended up like ranting. We ended up talking about Team Fortress 2 somehow, which... I didn't tell her about my Pokemon channel or about Pokemon. She found out about my Pokemon channel by when she added me on Skype. She saw Caterpie was my um, little icon dude. And she's like, oh, so you like Caterpies? And I'm like, hey, 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 yeah, I kind of play Pokemon. That's all I do in my life. Yay. But either way, so we start talking and about video games and all that. And I'm like doing everything I can to try to make this conversation continue because it's like, oh my god, I'm talking to a girl. This is like the, how life is supposed to be. It's fantastic. And it comes time, pretty much uh, like the end of our little sitting in the room before we go out to graduation is coming to an end. And she's like, so do you have like y Yahoo or something? And I'm here like, who the hell uses Yahoo? But yeah, actually, apparently people do. But I'm like, I have a Gmail. And I didn't even think of Skype at the time, which is like the one way I actually talk to people. So um, I end up giving her my Gmail name, which, for a record, my email account is, well, okay, my email account is just my YouTube name. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this, but... <laughs> 
uh, you know, with a three instead of an E. And I was like not really thinking at the time, and I ended up like typing out my name in her phone since it's kind of hard to spell if you don't know. And I ended up putting an E instead of a three. And I didn't really realize this first until we were all sitting out there at graduation, and I realized that like, oh my god, I put an E because I didn't remember if I actually had the email address that had the E in it because. I knew I had one to three. I didn't remember if I had the one with the E in it or not because I used to have a YouTube channel spelled that way, but it was closed down. So I didn't know if I kept the YouTube. I don't know if I kept the Gmail account or not. So I'm here freaking out that oh my god, did I give her the wrong email address? Am I never gonna talk to this girl again? And I was like really upset. And the entire award ceremony, I should be sitting here happy. I'm graduating high school. Yeah, no, I'm just panicked that I have to rush home and create an email address. So <laughs> after graduation gets over. My parents just kind of rushed me out of there because they wanted to leave, and so I didn't really even get a chance to like go say goodbye to her or anything. And went like I just rush home as fast as I can. When I do, I like grab my computer, I throw it open, and I try logging into the email address that has the E on it, and it works. I log into it, and there's an email address from her with the subject of salutations, fellow graduates. And uh, over a year later now, she's pretty much like my best friend, and. I like to think I'm a decent friend of hers, so <laughs> that is how I met Rusty, and that is why if a random deer comes over and sits next to you at graduation, don't run away, stare into those sunglasses and pray she doesn't try to eat you. Okay, on to your guys' stories now. The year was 2005, and I had taken a four-week trip to Australia with my mum, which included a stop off in Tokyo for a day on the way back to England. I didn't realize Tokyo was even between Australia and England. Not gonna lie, I don't know my geography. I was nine back then, and it was your typical cute, fuzzy-haired black kid who. Oh, 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 oh okay. So, okay. I'm I'm just like picturing um, the dude from Cleveland Show, like the the smallest boy. I'm reading your description, I just kind of I'm gonna picture you as him during this story. So, yeah, who often suffered from travel sickness. After somehow overcoming my nausea on the way there, it came back at full force just as we were landing at the airport. Five minutes, four sick bags, and one terrified air hostess later, the Japanese thought it was best that I was rushed off the air off to the airport's quarantine area, to lest less they run the risk of infecting the entire nation. Yeah, <laughs> uh, how awesome would that be? You just like go into a nation, make everybody in it sick, and then just leave laughing your ass off. That would just be fantastic. An hour passed and I was given the all clear along with some of the tastiest tonic water I've ever invented. It was not long after we'd gotten the train and found our way to the hotel that I was confronted with the, my next challenge, Japanese toilets. You see, in Japan, they build toilets with the power to fire cold jets of water up your arse. Playing around with the buttons, I was unaware of this feature until it was too late. I would have shot myself, but thankfully, that was already taken care of. Slightly traumatized from my ordeal, we went off to explore the city. I'll keep this part short because not a lot of strange stuff occurred. We visited an arcade or two, the variety of games was mouthwatering. Looked at some of the more cultural stuff and checked out a museum. Because that's totally what you should do on a vacation. You could go relax on the beach, go taste fantastic foods, or you can go in a museum. Your choice. I did quite a few stairs. I did get quite a few stares, but I guess many people there had never seen someone like me before. Notably at this time, Lucario and the Mystery Mew was showing in cinemas, and McDonald's was giving away FREE POKEMON CARDS with every meal. Needless to say, as any rational 9 year old would do in this situation, I neglected trying all the then rich cultural food in favor of this. Finally, as it was time to get to the, finally, as it was time to get the train back to the airport, I somehow lost my mom at the station. Turns out she had gotten on the train without me. Good job, Mom! I was more confused than afraid. The prospect of being stuck there didn't phase on me too much. They did have free Pokemon cards, after all. But nevertheless, I stuck around the platform just in case she came back to find me. Soon after, I was approached by these two cute Japanese girls who must have been around 17. Oh boy, I think I see where this is going. Clearly, they thought I was kawaii as a censored word because they were making that high-pitched squealing noise that only Asian women can replicate. <gasps> I beg to differ. I can make plenty of high-pitched squealing noises. You ready for this? You ready? <coughs> How was that? Was that good? Okay. Thankfully, though, it turns out they could speak English to a very high degree, so I explained to them the situation, to which they responded, Aww. Sad and saddened. Saddened faces. 
Staying by my side out of pity, eventually I was reunited with me mom, and we were back on the track as nice as it was to get home. I can't deny that I was a little disappointed to leave them. Even then, I understood the value of a fine agent booty. Yep, I knew it was going to end with a sex comment. I just saw that one coming. Anyways, let's go to another story now. A GPS once told a gay man to go straight. Wow, that was the worst story ever. So I decided I'm going to read this next one in a uh, in an odd voice. So that should be fun. Hey, Hardy. Well, here's my awkward situation story. I met up with a friend of mine and we went back to her place. One thing led to another and we found ourselves in bed together. That often happens to me, too. <laughs> I, I mean, that actually never happens to me. Anyways. Completely forgetting that the bedroom window was wide open. Anyway, after a while, we heard a few bangs on the window. Someone was throwing stones at it. I think they were trying to tell you to get stoned. Oh, God, that was a horrible joke. Then we heard the voice of her sister yelling, What's the out of there? Let me in! She jumped up and legged it downstairs to let her in, and happily, her bedroom door had a lock on it. While I was getting dressed, I saw the handle on the door moving. Someone was trying to get in. After a little while, whoever it was gave up. After a bit, my friend came back up and said it was her sister trying to see who she had over I asked where she was, and she was apparently set out in a front garden, sunbathing. So the only way for me to get out without being noticed was to run past the front door, where her sister was, and into the bathroom and climb out the window. Whilst I was climbing out, two people went past, both giving me scornful looks, tutting and shaking their heads. I often do that whenever someone tries to feed me broccoli. Just saying. A third person also came past and accused me of having breaking in. Because climbing out a window is, in fact, breaking in. People logic. <laughs> I decided to just leg it at this point, despite the woman shouting, saying she was calling the police. Unfortunately, this woman happened to know my friend's family, who ran round and told her sister what she had seen. The sister tattled to her mother, and she was grounded for the rest of the summer and not allowed anyone else over. Sad to say, I was blamed for this, and now we are no longer friends. Epically plays a violin. I hope you guys enjoyed this story in a more serious kind of manly voice. I figured since we're climbing out windows, we should sound like a man. Thank you guys for watching. Until then, continue to submit your stories. I'm Hardy Tech Yo-Yo. Peace. Peace.